A vector space is a set of vectors with addition and scalar multiplication that satisfy the axioms of addition and scalar multiplication shown below. We have five axioms of addition and five axioms of scalar multiplication. In this example, we're asked to select all the following that are vector spaces. First, we have the set of real numbers with the standard operations of addition and scalar multiplication. To see if this set is a vector space, we need to verify all five axioms of addition and all five axioms of scalar multiplication. If we take a look at these axioms though, if we replace vectors u and v with real numbers, they should remind us of several of the properties of real numbers. For example, the sum of two real numbers is equal to another real number, and therefore we have closure under addition. The commutative law of addition and the associative law of addition all hold true for real numbers. Zero is a real number, and therefore the additive identity is true, where a real number plus zero equals a real number. And every real number has its opposite, and therefore the existence of an additive inverse is also true. And then for the axioms of scalar multiplication, for closure under scalar multiplication, if A is a real number, A times another real number is still a real number. Both distributive properties hold true for real numbers, as well as the associative property, and one is a real number, where one times a real number is equal to the same real number, which satisfies the multiplicative identity property. The set of real numbers is a vector space known as R1, or just R. Next, we have the set of all three by four matrices with the standard operations of addition and scalar multiplication. Let's take a closer look at this set. If we add matrix A and matrix B, which are both two by three matrices, we get another two by three matrix, which we can call matrix C, by adding the corresponding elements. And therefore, we do have closure under addition. Matrix addition is also commutative and associative. There is a zero two by three matrix, such that matrix A plus a zero matrix is equal to matrix A, which verifies the existence of the additive identity. And for every matrix A, there's the opposite of matrix A, where the elements have the opposite sign, such that the sum of the two two by three matrices is equal to the two by three zero matrix. Moving on to the axioms of scalar multiplication, if C is a scalar, C times matrix A is equal to another two by three matrix, which we can call matrix B, where the elements of matrix B are found by multiplying C and every element in matrix A. We have closure under scalar multiplication. The distributive properties are also true for all two by three matrices, where C times the sum of matrix A and B is equal to C times matrix A plus C times matrix B, and the quantity C plus D times matrix A is equal to C times matrix A plus D times matrix A. Similarly, the associative property of multiplication also holds true, and one times matrix A is equal to matrix A, verifying the multiplicative identity property. The set of two by three matrices makes up a vector space. Next, we have the set of all integers with the standard operations of addition and scalar multiplication. So looking at the axioms of addition, if we add two integers, we still get an integer. We have closure under addition. Integer addition is commutative and associative, that's true. Zero is an integer, and therefore we do have the existence of the additive identity. Every integer has its opposite, which verifies we have the existence of an additive inverse. But moving on to the axioms of scalar multiplication, we run into a problem. Remember, A and B are any real number. So if we take any real number and multiply it by an integer, we do not always get another integer, and therefore we don't have closure under scalar multiplication. For example, for example, if we let a equal one half and multiply by the integer, let's say three, this gives us three halves or 1.5, which is not in the set of integers, which is why we don't have closure under scalar multiplication. We can stop the set of integers as not a vector space. Next, we have the set of all polynomials of degree exactly four, again with standard operations of addition and scalar multiplication. So, all of the polynomials in this set are in the form of p of x equals a sub zero plus a sub one times x plus a sub two times x squared 
plus a sub three times x cubed plus a sub four times x to the fourth. However, if all the polynomials have degree exactly four, we also have the condition that a sub four can't equal zero. Because if it did, the degree would be less than four. Starting with the axioms of addition, it all looks good until we get to the existence of the additive identity. The zero polynomial would be p of x equals zero. But p of x equals zero has degree zero. And therefore, the zero polynomial is not in the set of all polynomials of degree exactly four. And therefore, we can stop. We don't have the existence of an additive identity. And therefore, the set of polynomials of degree exactly four is not a vector space. And then finally, we have the set of all continuous functions defined on the closed interval from one to three, again, with the standard operations of addition and scalar multiplication. Let's take a closer look. We first check for closure under addition. So if we add two continuous functions over the closed interval from one to three, we would get a new function, which we can call h of x, which will still be continuous over the closed interval from one to three, we do have closure under addition. Remember when adding functions, we're simply adding the y values, which would not affect whether the function was continuous or not. Function addition is also commutative and associative. For the existence of the additive identity, the function y equals zero is continuous over the closed interval from one to three, and therefore the additive identity does exist in the set where f of x plus zero equals f of x. And for every continuous function over the closed interval from one to three, there is the opposite of the function such that the sum is equal to zero, which satisfies the existence of an additive inverse. And now we move on to the axioms of scalar multiplication. Any scalar a times a continuous function over the closed interval from one to three results in another function continuous over the closed interval from one to three. We have closure under scalar multiplication. The distributive properties are also true, where c times the sum of f of x and g of x equals c times f of x plus c times g of x, and the quantity c plus d times f of x is equal to c times f of x plus d times f of x. The associative property multiplication is also true, and we also have the multiplicative identity where one times f of x is equal to f of x. All the axioms are satisfied. The set of all continuous functions defined over the closed interval from one to three does form a vector space. I did brush over some of these axioms fairly quickly, so you may want to go back and verify some of these in more detail. I hope you found this helpful.